afternoon, Montenegro. Mickey Gaggis from the Cockney Rajex here. Now, Georgie sent me some questions in, and I'm going to do my best to answer them. Uh, in question one, he says, During the years, you've become legends in many ways. Thanks for saying so. Locally, to an entire London city, and one music genre, then one football club. We all know which one, of course. And everyone says you're great guys. How do you feel about that whole thing? Well, first of all, we're very humbled, and uh, we're very glad to be considered that. Um, we are a London band, uh, although London isn't the city it once was, unfortunately. But um, yes, we consider ourselves a London band and we're very proud to have been at the forefront of uh, a certain type of rock punk movement uh, that we're very happy about. So yeah, we, we consider ourselves very fortunate, but also we're very hard working and uh, we obviously love our supporters more than I think most bands ever will. And we owe everything to you guys, so we never forget that. Uh, secondary, uh, in a film about this, you're talking about how much everything changed. What do you miss about old London, old football? Well, obviously football has completely changed. I think it's horrible now. I think the terrace is being taken away and the commercialisation of the game has been an absolute scandal. There's too much money in it. It's been taken away from the game of working class people. Basically, it's a plaything of multi-millionaire industrialists and lawyers and everything else now and it isn't the game that we remember I mean I'll still support good old West Ham because it's in my heart and it's in my head and I'm from West Ham uh, so to answer that yes I'm afraid football isn't the game it once was and it never will be again um, as for London, London has changed unfortunately all the old cockneys have left uh, there's a change in demographic but that's progress according to some people and that's the way it is um, it's not the same, uh, I don't know anyone here anymore, hardly, you know, uh, no one's in the street, everyone's gone, um, and down to COVID it's even worse, the West End itself is absolutely dead, but that's the same in many cities all over the world, and let's just hope we can get back to normal as soon as possible, but to answer that question, London isn't the same, but things move on, and you have to accept that, that's the way it is. Question three, the world is, a strange is in a strange situation right now. As a punk and oi band, it represents most of the working class people. It seems this virus has finally shown the governments in a whole world response to a crisis. What do you feel about the whole situation? Well, I think what's going on there is absolutely terrible. I think it's been overrated and overinflated. And I think that this is designed to keep people from living their lives to the full. Uh, if this crisis was managed better by governments around the world, by not panicking... Every time there's a single death or anything, you know what I mean? Because this happens, uh, respira respiratory illnesses do take place and they can be deadly. I'm not dismissing the impact of COVID and the deadliness uh, such as it was back in uh, March. But I think we've got to learn to live with this and stop, keep shutting people away. We're not all toxic to each other. Also, I believe that the tests uh, are very unreliable and that there's many more positive results coming up than there actually are but that's a personal view and obviously while every death is regrettable and terrible I still think the governments shockingly have handled this very badly around the world and I uh, don't think me or many other millions of people will ever forgive them for it they've totally jumped the gun and overreacted and imprisoned people in their own homes and that is the biggest curtail of civil liberties even more than took place in World War II it's wrong anyway um, you asked me how do I see the changes in the punk and oid movement well um, it got a bit stale for a while I'm sure there's some really good young bands coming on but I haven't heard anything original and to keep doing the same thing as you did in the 70s or 80s you know when you were young men you have to move on you have to keep the the crux of what you are and you know um, and take your feelings into the 21st century and put that there on the records so I hope that these bands will go on for a long, long, long time when this all comes back and we can all see each other again and play on each other's stages again. And um, let's hope that happens sooner, much rather than later. It says, you have a great influence in American music, especially our car. Ollie Flanagan says you're one of his three favourite bands from the UK. You produce a lot of records. So thank you, Harley. We're a great admirer of New York our car. Um, you know, uh, some brilliant bands out there, um, Chromex being one of them, also, um, you know, the, the great bands like Sick of It All, Lou Collar and the Boys, 
and Vinny Sigma and um, the guys in Agnostic Front, and we love them too. We've always been a, a, a rock hardcore band at heart, and uh, we wish all those guys well, and we hope, again, to see them very soon. He says, I want to ask you about your heavy metal period. That's the fun fact from your career. Well, I've said this before, me, Vince and Jeff are always influenced by rock before we were influenced by punk, so I never make any apologies for that. Everybody else was doing the same thing at the time, and we being the rejects, we always do what we think we want to do. You know what I mean? We don't just make records because we think they'll sell. We make records because they come from the heart. And that's what we did in our so-called heavy metal period. And um, I dare say we're not finished with that genre, although punk is where our heart is. But to me, it's all rock and roll. It's all guitar-based rock and roll. So I don't really see a great difference between the two genres. Yeah, you asked me to tell you about 98 performance at Birmingham Cedar Club. Well, that was a bad night all round um, for everyone involved. There was a bigger story to it, which is coming out in a book, not by us, by someone else. Uh, so I better hold fire on that until this book is published and then everybody will know the true story of what happened at Cedar Club that night. We'll leave it at that. Number eight, I've got to ask you, what is the worst, best and worst Ham, West Ham player for you in the history of our club? Well, basically, um, we all have Billy Bonds, Billy's our man, uh, Bobby Moore, Trevor Brooking, Alan Taylor, all the greats. And there's been some truly awful players, and I'm not going to shame them by saying so, but uh, just a little aside, um, one of the worst goalkeepers they ever had happened to be my grandfather, Jack Gegas, And... He was a big man, and he wasn't a very nice man. And he was playing at home once against Chelsea, and he let in a goal. And some people behind the South Bank started pelting him with coins. So my granddad, being who he was, he jumped over the stands and started laying in and punching as many supporters as he could, and he got suspended for it. But, um, well, he must have been pretty good to a paper West Ham in the first place. But uh, that was back when they was Thames Ironworks. But, yes... Um, as goalkeepers, Jack maybe wasn't the best, but he had the best of intentions. Um, I'd like to thank you for asking for this interview, and I'm more than pleased to grant it. And we love you all, and we will not, we hope we see you very, very soon live on stage. Take care, everybody. Thank you.